Hey guys, and uh, well, welcome back. So, just like promised, the time is ticking, a new day, a uh, new week, and also a new video in our Fabix official channel. And uh, previously, we talked about how you can install the Zabbix server and also how you can install a Zabbix proxy. I still have the same uh, or training virtual machine with a CentOS 7 uh, SL Linux is disabled. Firewall is also disabled because we are learning about the Zabbix but I am still mentioning all the things that might be related to those things. So the topic for today is a bit easier actually. I didn't want to make it too complicated in the first videos and uh, well you probably could tell that from the from the topic of this video we will be talking about user parameters in the Zabbix agent. Uh, first of all like what is user parameter? Why should we use it in context of the Zabbix agent? Uh, first of all, you know that Zabbix Agent is a software a utility that is basically most widely used uh, in any Zabbix infrastructures in terms of the monitoring. That is definitely the most popular monitoring type simply because the Zabbix Agent is super lightweight software. It consumes just a couple of megs of the memory, not definitely not heavy on, on the CPU. Uh, we do have uh, RPM packages for the most popular Linux versions and it is also possible to easily install it on any Windows machine. So basically if you have a Windows or if you have a Linux, you can use a Zabbix agent. What's the benefit? Zabbix agent has a lot, like really a lot metrics that you can monitor from the box, which means that it is not required to invent something new. You don't need to write a custom script, configure some complex scenarios for the monitoring. All you need to do is spend like two minutes of your time to install a Zabbix agent on the machine, then open the documentation. In the configuration, items, item type Zabbix agent, you will find all available supported from the box monitoring items that you can use without any additional configuration. So just go to the front end, Create a host for your Zabbix agent, click on the items, create new, and pick the one that you need from the documentation, like monitoring the service state, or uh, let's say the free disk space, you can do some discovery, uh, monitor the network interfaces, memory, a lot, a lot of stuff from the box. But what is user parameter? Sometimes it happens that you have some kind of uh, machine, Windows, or Linux box again, and you need to monitor something not very common, not a disk space, not a CPU load on, on the machine, but some a little bit specific application. And you know that you can get the desired metric easily with just a couple of the commands in the CLI. However, you cannot find the item in the documentation for that. So you should somehow teach the Zabbix to execute that small tiny command or it might be a bit more complex script and receive the value from the script or the command line as a value inside a Zabbix. And today we'll actually talk about how you can do that and also the possible differences between I would call them static user parameter and a dynamic user parameter. So let's get into the virtual machine and uh, see what we have here. So get a CLI CLI and uh, we will be using a Zabbix agent that we have here and we need to open the configuration file of the Zabbix agent that again by default is stored in Etsy Zabbix Zabbix underscore agent D dot conf. So let's go there. Etsy Zabbix Zabbix agent D dot conf and here search for capital user and capital P. You will find on safe user parameters, that's not the thing that we need for today. We need this one, user parameters. And there's also a small description what it is. User defined parameter to monitor. So basically you have a chance, you have a functionality to create your own small or, or it might be a bit larger items to collect some kind of specific data. So what we will doing today is you know that it is possible, I will close the, the config file and run it, uh, Zabbix server minus capital B will return the, some information about the, about the service, like the copyright, revision, and also the version 4.05. Uh, 
And same applies for Zybex agent, D minus capital V, also the version. So let's try to create a user parameters to collect in Zabbix the major version of our binary, so 4.0. How we'll do that? I will get back to the configuration file, user parameters, and we need to create a new one, which means that we can leave the default value as it is, just as for example, and write a new line, which will be capital user, then parameter, equals, the first part is the key, the key that you will have to use in the front end, and uh, it must be unique, uh, it must follow the key syntaxes that you can check in our documentation, and uh, you just need to forget uh, to remember it to later use in the front end. So let's make this static, because now I will be creating and showing you the static user parameter. So add a comma, and then we need to add a command that will be executed when the Zabbix server will call for this user parameter with a key static. And my command will be user has been Zabbix underscore agent D minus capital V. So when I will create an item inside the front end with a type Zabbix agent and a key static, I will receive the same value as executing this command. Then let's make another user parameter. So just in the new line, add user parameter equals, and this one will be dynamic. And then in the brackets that we used to use in the front end to specify different parameters, we need to write a star. Again, comma and a command that will be executed. So just like before, user has been, but in this case, we expect that this user parameter will be dynamic. So in my design, the last part will change based on what we will specify in the front end as item parameters. And so I will be specifying here dollar sign one, which means the first parameter from my front end from the item configuration. And the second one, I will simply create to show you that uh, you need to be careful with your user parameters and the stuff that you are trying to execute here. And I will understand, that, uh, explain that a little bit later. So user parameter equals, let's make it timeout, comma, sleep 10, and echo test. Let's save this, write quit. So we have three user parameters. And remember that each time you make some changes to any configuration file of the Zabbix, maybe the Zabbix agent, the server, or the proxy, or whatever else, you always need to restart the process, not the server itself, but only the process to which you change the config file. In this case, it will be systemctl restart Zabbix agent. Good. Now we can actually go to the front end. I've already created here in configuration host, I've added a new host, which is called the user parameters, and it is pointed to my local host agent. So now let's create a new items. A new items, create item, agent, version. Let's call that type Zabbix agent. And key, remember what we added in the first part of user parameter, the first one was static. In type of information, there is a choice. You can specify numeric float because we will be extracting the actual 4.0 value from all that bunch of the text. But since it is 4.0, Zabbix will show it simply as 4 because, well, dot zero. So instead, we might be using text here. Static with a type of information text update interval. I will make it like uh, five seconds just to work quicker. And since you already saw in the CLI that the command Zabbix underscore server minus V displays a lot, a lot of information. So uh, we need to extract just 4.0, which means that we need to add a pre-processing step inside our front end, which will be regular expression in my case. And uh, well, let's check what kind of line do we have. Zabbix underscore something. 
So the pattern will be Savix underscore something. Then there could be anything. Then there will be a space and a matching group, which will be any number dot any number and a closing capture group. And we want to display the first one. Should be like this. Click add. Then, so this one will be showing about the agent, but remember we created also a user parameter for Savix agent D for dynamic one. Rep user parameter, this one, dynamic, which executes user SBIN and a first parameter from our front end item. So let's actually clone the one that we just created. This will be the server version. Same time Zabbix agent. The key is not static, but dynamic. And I already have an example because I've tested before. So in the parameter, we specify the binary name which we want to use here instead of the dollar sign one. Preprocessing remains the same because start Zabbix underscore, underscore also remains the same. Uh, two, two numbers, two integers, and a first capturing group. So add this one. And then the last one. Again, click clone. There was a typo, the version, but whatever. Uh, timeout example, Zabbix agent, and the key is from our last user parameter, the timeout. So click timeout, and the preprocessing won't actually matter here. You will see why. I will just add it, same five seconds update interval. Then I will run Zabbix server minus r config cache reload simply to reload all the changes that we just made in the front end and uh, save us some time. So we already have some kind of problem. I previous failed, cannot perform regular expression match pattern, doesn't match type string value. Let's try this one with a Zabbix get to troubleshoot. Like to 701 minus key dynamic Zabbix server. Nothing. So we made some kind of a mistake. Let's check the static one. Static one works. Let's go back to the Zabbix agent d.conf. User s bin. I forgot to add minus v. See, so basically I was executing user s bin Zabbix server. So actually, instead of trying to visualize the version, I was trying to start the binary again. So I need to add minus v and again restart the agent. Systemctl restart Zabbix dash agent. Then we could go. Uh, this will be again just to save us some time in the administration general other and specify refresh on supported items to one second because we obviously don't want to wait 10 minutes. Then reload the config cache again. And right now the item should become supported. So let's check that. Yep, item was supported. So let's see what do we have in the latest data. So latest data. The host is user parameter. Click on the apply. We can also click the show details. And there we go. We have three items agent version, the server version with a typo instead of the version. Uh, and the last received value is 4.0. Remember that the actual value that we are getting is this multiple lines of random text with a copyright and also that includes this version. But we are also utilizing the pre-processing functionality inside as Zabbix, about which we'll definitely make a, another video, a full video that will cover all of that functionality. So this is just a quick insight. And we are getting just a version number, 4.0. This one, timeout example, why it is not supported because the timeout while executing a script. So remember, in all the processes of the Zabbix, maybe at czabbix, zabbixagentd.conf, there is a timeout parameter. Default value you can see is three seconds. Same is in the Zabbix server.conf. Typo. Grab timeout, timeout, four seconds. 
which means that any custom user parameter that you will create that will be running for more than a timeout parameter will become not supported inside the Zabbix frontend, which means that when you are creating your own custom checks, you need to make sure that those are running fast enough. If you have some custom scripts that are running for the minutes, you need to figure out another way how you can execute it and gather a metric as a value. And uh, in the next videos, we'll definitely talk about also about those other options, how you can use some heavy scripts together with a Zabbix sender to monitor your specific applications. But uh, well, for today, I guess that's it for a quick insight in the Zabbix agent and Zabbix user parameters. Just like before, if you have any additional questions about this topic or maybe some wishes for the next topics we might talk about, questions, uh, feedback, suggestions, any, any comments about uh, these series of videos, just post them in the comments. If you like our content, don't forget to click the thumbs up button, the like button, and also, of course, subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. But uh, for today, that's it. So thank you guys for your time again and uh, see you later. Goodbye.